It's just our turn to stand up for working people and to stand up for our nation's promise. It's just our turn to defend our rights and to ensure that democracy doesn't die on our watch. Pennsylvania State Representative Malcolm Kenyatta speaking at the Democratic National Convention there this summer. Kenyatta is no stranger to breaking barriers. In 2018, he became the first openly LGBTQ plus person of color and one of the youngest people ever to become a member of the state's General Assembly. In 2022, he became the first openly LGBTQ plus person of color to seek a U.S. Senate seat. And now he's running for Pennsylvania Auditor General. Representative Malcolm Kenyatta joins us now. Welcome to the show. Uh, appreciate you talking with us. We just heard uh, some of your rousing speech there at the DNC. Uh, give us a sense of, of what keeps you pushing, what gives you your energy? Well, you know what? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, but when you grow up in a working poor family like I did, I'm the son of a social worker and a certified nursing aide, um, you know, who separated when I was young, meaning I got my first job at 12 years old, washing dishes at a little restaurant. Um, but I buried both of those parents by the time I was 27 because they didn't have access to the type of health care that everybody uh, deserves. And I spent all of my life with a mama that got up every day, worked hard, but still found that the pay that she received and the bills and expenses that she had, they didn't match up. So we depended on so many of the social safety net programs that have made life livable uh, for so many working class families that are frankly at risk right now. And so in this moment, not only do we deserve a government that works for working people and working families, but we deserve leaders who are gonna do everything they can to prioritize them, not just folks who are well off and well connected. In this election cycle, there's been a lot of conversation about double standards based on race and gender identity. What's been your experience as you meet with voters and, and campaign for office? Listen, the good news is I get to run in what I selfishly think uh, is the best Commonwealth uh, in, our, in our union, best state in our union. And so everywhere I go across the Commonwealth, people are interested in what my vision is for the future, how I'm going to help make their family feel more secure, less tenuous, um, and how we can have a government that, frankly, is as good as our people. As you're well aware, in the presidential race, polls show Harris and Trump neck and neck in Pennsylvania, a state that could certainly decide the White House. What are you hearing from voters out there about the issues that, that matter to them? So first, I can say, you can you heard it here first, um, Vice President Harris is going to win Pennsylvania. Really? And she's going to win because she has a she has a message that is laser focused on the things that I do here every single day. How do we make it so that people can afford that first home, get their little piece of the American dream? How do we continue to uh, spur um, small business growth? The vice president's plan of um, expanding dramatically the amount of uh, dollars that people can write off as they start small businesses, that is transformational. Also, the vice president's uh, proposal around allowing Medicare to uh, cover in-home care for seniors, that is a game changer. And so I'm so excited to watch somebody who comes from a middle-class family carry those middle-class, uh, working-class values um, all the way to the White House. And it's because of her vision um, that I think you're going to see a majority of Pennsylvanians get out and vote for her. All right. We'll see how uh, accurate your crystal ball is there, <laughs> Malcolm Kenyatta. Well, you have me back. I'll be happy uh, to talk about this. Uh, <laughs> will do. Will do. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it.